Completely changing the color of an object is something that I think everyone will want to do at one point or another. We're going to do that, but using layers so that they're non-destructive edits. I've saved a selection for you under Select, Load Selection. But I purposely left some holes in it to show you how to refine a mask. When you see Load Selection, there's one channel called Car, and click OK. Now I see the marching ants, and I'm ready to make an adjustment. One of my favorite ways is with Hue and Saturation. This Adjustments panel makes non-destructive edits and will be like a filter over top of the background layer. So when I hit Create a new Hue and Saturation layer, I can slide Hue to almost any shade in the rainbow. And it makes pretty big moves on the color of the car. I think I'm feeling green today, so we'll go for green. You could do other global edits by hitting Colorize, and sometimes that's helpful. But I'm going to turn off Colorize in this case, because I think just moving the hue is doing exactly what I want. Let's go for red. All right, I've settled on my red car. I can increase the saturation, which may cause it to look fake. I can pull out saturation, it goes towards a gray car, but I'll leave it just slightly in the positive. I can go for a darker shade of red, but be careful. Lightness often makes it look fake. So I think it's safe to go a little bit darker, but be careful not to go too light. And here are the traps I built for you. If I collapse properties, which is where you modify any adjustment layer you've created, if I collapse it by clicking the Properties icon once, you'll notice there's a little tiny silhouette in white of the car. White is revealing the hue and saturation adjustment. And I left these bumpy parts along the bottom so you could clean up this mask. Technically, because we had a selection, when we added hue and saturation, it created a mask. So I will zoom in with Command Plus or Control Plus and I will go to my Paint Brush tool. B for Brush will get me there. Once on my Paint Brush tool, white will reveal more of the hue and saturation. So that's what I want right now. And here is my favorite power user trick. I can just paint, but that's a little inaccurate. And before I paint, I should adjust my brush. There's a lot of areas that need fixing, so I'll dial my brush size up about the height of the areas I need to fix. I also like a lot of hardness, meaning I want 95% of my brush to have a crisp, sharp edge, but 5% to taper or feather that will blend better. So I tend to use a high hardness value when I'm editing a mask. One click here on the first area that's gone awry and moving to the opposite side. Now I did a quick click and let go. Moving to the opposite side, I can hold down my shift key and click once and it plays connect the dots. It's fabulous for straight line editing and then I just had a little bit of cleanup to do. I'll scoot over and try it again. One click, move to the right, hold down shift, click again, a perfectly straight line, and I'll finish by cleaning up the remainder. So if I zoom down, there is my recolored car. I might want to name hue and saturation red if I'm doing different colors. I could try different colors on different layers. In fact, I'll put the red in front of hue and saturation just because it cuts off the name. So let's try this. I can go back to, oops, I missed an area, back to my mask, click once, shift click, and I did a little painting. All right, now I'm back on my mask, and another power user trick is on the Mac, I can hold down Command and click once, 
and that loads this mask as a selection? Or on Windows, hold down your Control key and click once on the black and white mask. I'll hide Hue and Saturation, and I'll do another one. Hue and Saturation again, and try a different color. I really like the bright yellow on this car. It just seems to go with sports cars for me. So now, I'll double click, name this yellow. So once it's named, I could do several mock-ups to the client. Imagine my client is Tesla. It's not, but that's the car. So once it's approved, they can tell me which one they like the best in the ad, the original orange, the red, or the yellow. And I do see one little tiny area that was picking up the orange at the top of the window, so I will make sure that my mask is targeted by clicking it. And white reveals. I want to reveal more of the yellow. I'll do a very tiny brush, anywhere from one to three pixels. So I might need to zoom in a lot. Three works, I think. Click once, shift click. And actually, the yellow's working. It's just not strong enough to cover up that area. If I hide it here, and turn on the red, it's part of the mask. There's a subtle change there. But the reflection is the reflection. It may be picking up something else outside. So I'm going to let it go. And I'm very happy with the overall result. Often I turn on and off the layer or hide and show the layer to see if there's an object that's not changing. And that little piece might need editing but might already be in the mask. So let's find out. White reveals. It's definitely in the mask, so I'm fine. So this has been changing the color of an object using a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Find a photo where you have a very bright color and see if you can make a selection. I use the quick selection tool for this. And then after quick selection, refine edge. And then once I was finished and happy with it, I saved the selection under Select Save Selection. So you guys could just start with Select Load Selection. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's one of my favorite things to do, show global changes on objects using safe, non-destructive adjustment layers.